Hey everyone, I'm Kelsey from Wearable Whisperer, and today I'm going to share 19 things to know about the Fitbit Sense. So the first thing to know is that it comes with a new type of band. The material is noticeably softer than any of the previous classic Fitbit bands, and it has a new way to fasten the band. Fitbit calls this their Infinity Band, and you'll probably either love it or hate it. I still sometimes find it harder than it should be to get the band on, but I think this is because my wrist size falls between two of the sizing holes. Changing out the bands, however, is extremely easy and only takes a matter of seconds. The second thing to know about the Fitbit Sense is that it doesn't have any physical buttons. Instead, Fitbit has designed a haptic button that provides a vibration feedback when it's been pressed. The reason for this is to improve water resistance. However, the non-physical button does take some getting used to. The third thing to know about the Fitbit Sense is that it comes with an updated user interface. The biggest improvements here are new shortcuts, more customization, and more data visible on the watch itself. For example, from the clock face, you can swipe to the right and reveal the quick settings. You can also press and hold the button to access a shortcut, or double press the button to access four additional shortcuts. These shortcuts can be customized in the settings app, and there's a surprisingly long list of options to choose from including your favorite exercise. One thing I really love about the new user interface is the ability to customize what you see when you swipe up from the clock face. Scrolling all the way down to the bottom and tapping on Manage reveals the customization options. Here you can choose which widgets to show or hide and reorder them however you want. Clicking on a widget allows you to further customize which individual stats get shown or hidden and in what order. When you're done customizing your widgets, you can also tap on an individual stat, like sleep, and get more data on the watch itself. The biggest frustration with the new user interface is that the Today app takes way too long to load. Hopefully this can be fixed in a future firmware update. Thing number four to know about the Fitbit Sense is that it has an updated heart rate sensor. Fitbit calls this Pure Pulse 2.0, and says it is an all-new multipath sensor with an updated algorithm. I'll have a future video that shares my experience with the heart rate accuracy of the sense, so be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that video. Thing number five to know about the Fitbit Sense is that it's the first Fitbit that has ECG capabilities. This means it can analyze your heartbeat and let you know if you show signs of AFib, an irregular heart rhythm. To take a measurement, you'll open the new ECG app Place your fingers on the corners of the watch and keep still. After 30 seconds, your result will be shown, and if needed, you can also download a report of your results to share with your doctor. Thing number six to know about the Fitbit Sense is that it has high and low heart rate notifications. This means that you'll get an alert if you've been inactive for at least 10 minutes and your heart rate falls above or below a certain threshold. If needed, you can even customize at what heart rates you'd like to be notified. Thing number seven to know about the Fitbit Sense is that it's the first smartwatch ever to have an electrodermal activity sensor. EDA for short, this sensor can detect small electrical changes in the sweat level of your skin. To activate this sensor, you'll need to open the new EDA scan app and start a quick scan or a guided session. You'll be prompted to cover the screen with the palm of your opposite hand and keep still. Once your scan is complete, you'll feel a vibration and can lift your hand. On the screen, you'll be given the option to log how stressed you feel, and then you'll see a graph of your EDA responses over the course of your scan. It's not currently clear how useful this data will be, but it's certainly great that Fitbit wants to help people assess and manage their stress. Thing number eight to know about the Fitbit Sense is that it has a new mindfulness tile as part of the app experience. You can now track days and minutes of mindfulness and see your history over time, but only if you use Fitbit's in-app mindful sessions, most of which are gated behind a premium subscription. For the first time ever, you can also see a history of when you used the Relax app for guided breathing, and you'll also find a history of your EDA scan app usage here too. Thing number nine to know about the Fitbit Sense is that it provides a new stress management score. The score ranges from one to 100, 
and a higher number means your body is showing fewer physical signs of stress. To get this score, Fitbit uses your heart rate, activity, and sleep data, as well as your EDA responses. You can also log your mood and see a history of your score and mood levels, which could help you see if your mood and signs of physical stress are related. If the idea of a stress management score stresses you out, you'll be glad to know that you can hide the score so that it doesn't appear anywhere on your Fitbit dashboard. Thing number 10 to know about the Fitbit Sense is that it has a new skin temperature sensor. The way Fitbit is currently implementing this measurement requires you to wear your sense to sleep. You also won't get a temperature reading like 98.6 degrees. Instead, after three nights, your initial skin temperature baseline is established and you'll start to receive an average nightly difference from your baseline. If you have Fitbit Premium, you can also see a graph of how your skin temperature varied during your sleep. Thing number 11 to know about the Fitbit Sense is that it has a new blood oxygen measurement, but it's currently quite limited. In addition to seeing a numberless graph of your estimated oxygen variation during an individual night of sleep, you can now see your nightly average blood oxygen level as a percentage. Unfortunately, there is no way to take a blood oxygen measurement on demand, nor does Fitbit seem to give you any blood oxygen data unless you wear your sense to sleep. You also have to use a specific clock face in order to receive the blood oxygen level as a percentage, and you also have to be a premium subscriber to see a history of your blood oxygen percentage over time. If you do use the specific SpO2 clock face and wear your sense to sleep, you'll need to sync your sleep and then wait up to an hour after syncing to see your average blood oxygen level as well as your minimum and maximum. Thing number 12 to know about the Fitbit Sense is that you can use a voice assistant to start a workout, set alarms, check the weather, and more. Currently, you can choose to set up Amazon Alexa, and Fitbit says Google Assistant is coming to the Sense in late 2020. Thing number 13 to know about the Fitbit Sense is that it has a built-in speaker. Unfortunately, the speaker isn't currently used for anything you might expect it to be used for, like to make it sound for alarms or incoming notifications, nor is it used for Amazon Alexa responses. What it will eventually be used for is actually thing number 14 to know about the Fitbit Sense, which is that it will eventually allow you to take quick calls from your wrist using the built-in speaker and microphone. This feature is claimed to be coming soon and still requires you to be near your phone. Thing number 15 to know about the Fitbit Sense could be a deal breaker. There is no longer the option to transfer your personal music files to the watch. You also still can't download Spotify playlists for offline listening. You can download Pandora and Deezer playlists, but that's it. Thing number 16 to know about the Fitbit Sense is that it has built-in GPS. Fitbit claims up to 12 hours of battery life if using the GPS continuously, which means it should be able to last for an entire marathon or all-day hike or bike ride, assuming you're charged enough before you start. Thing number 17 to know about the Fitbit Sense is that it has an always-on display mode. In order to save some battery, most clock faces will have a different look after the screen timeout begins. But I've been able to find some clock faces that have an always-on design that I really like. Thing number 18 to know about the Fitbit Sense is that it has a battery life of up to 6 days. However, that value does vary depending on your specific usage, and even decreases to only 2 days if you're using the always-on display. Also, using the built-in GPS will decrease your battery roughly 10% per hour of use. Battery life hasn't been an issue for me, however, because the final thing to know about the Fitbit Sense is that it is capable of quick charging. Fitbit states that charging the Sense for 12 minutes should give you 24 hours of battery life. But do note that this value will be significantly less if you use either the always-on display or the built-in GPS. Fitbit also states that charging from 10% to 80% should only take 40 minutes. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up below as it really helps this video and my channel, and consider subscribing if you want to see more videos about the Fitbit Sense and other wearable content. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.